Hi! Today we'll be talking about the grid method, which is a very easy way to transfer your sketch or your reference photo onto a panel or other surface. It can be a small panel, but it can also be a very big canvas. That's the beauty of the grid method. Let's dive right in. So what do I use? I use uh, pencils from the brand Faber-Castell. I have a white one and a burnt sienna one. As you can see, the burnt sienna is the one I use most. Um, and the good thing about these pencils is, is that they don't really mix with your paint, with your pigments. So uh, unlike charcoal or, or regular pencil, uh, it doesn't really mud out your colors, which I really think is a plus. You can easily remove uh, your lines with a nettable eraser. Now, what do I paint on? It's a panel. Uh, I can make a separate video on the surface. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you'd like to know more about the surfaces I use. At each interval of five centimeters, just a little mark. And I'm not drawing any lines, I'm just putting little dots. And I do so because it will save me a lot of time of erasing unwanted uh, line work later on. And once I have them on the outsides, I also do them on the insides. Always put your ruler a little bit underneath the line itself because your pencil will always stick out a bit. Otherwise, they're not on the same spots. I opened the reference picture in Procreate. That's my son enjoying the pool. And I wanted to make a funny portrait of him. The good thing about a smaller panel and a iPad is that you can roughly put it at the same size. So it's easy also to compare side by side. But we're going to go over the grid method in this case. And the grid method also is very easy if you're working on bigger formats than your reference picture. Let's go to this drawing guide. So if you go to settings and then drawing guide, and then edit draw guide. There you can change the settings of your grid. You can change the color, you can change the opacity. I always have it a bit transparent. You can put the thickness of your lines and also the grid size. I work with centimeters, so I put my grid size at five centimeters. And as you can see, it has beautiful, even slices, just as on our panel. Let me just boost up the opacity here for demo purposes. And what helps is if you really want to put it side by side, you can do so too, because you have here the lines, which kind of continue here on these dotted lines. I always like to look for the points on my, uh, on my grid where the lines of the subject touch. So here, for example, his ear is more than half, slightly over it, so I just put there a little indication line. And I can do this with my pencils or with paint, just as you please, of course. But that's the first thing I do, is just get indications of where those lines hit. A bit too diluted, so I'm just adding a bit more. And this by no means needs to be a perfect sketch. It's just indications. You can also do side by side like this if you have the same size. About halfway, not enough there. And I'm using water soluble oil paints, so I'm not using any turpentine. comparing the shapes here with the shapes there to get a feel 
of where to put my lines. And there's an ear here somewhere. Put in that height. As you can tell, these are all very big shapes I'm doing. No details at all. Now, what's the bottom of this ear? I can easily do like that. Detailing will come later on. I'm not worried at, at all about that now. Just about getting the, the right locations. This is just over half. And then we have the water here. More water. And I must say these initial sketches, or initial lines, they always look horrible to me. And uh, while you're while you're painting it, it seems like oh you're you're doing quite a okay job at it, and you're you're getting there. But it's really a quite ugly phase, which you have to go through before you can really get somewhere. And here, I'm not putting lines, but just some shadow indications. Making life easy on myself. Helps also see the bigger picture in the end. Now, this kind of follows that shape like this. Just following it. Careful not to go too heavy over our initial dots because those can easily be blended up like that. This is all very thin, diluted with water. Just indicating the shadow areas, no detailing at all. But it does help with getting your measurements in there. Now here's roughly the hairline. The nose is almost on this line here, but then at a slight angle. I'm just doing an indication. You can see how big your brush is. It's uh, basically two, two brush sizes. So I'm going to start from one corner, one and two. That's roughly where the nose, the bottom of the nose should be. And then not doing any detail here, I'm just indicating the bottom of the nose. We have an eye over here, 
almost hitting the line on that side. And then another eye going over that line. This is about it. And the good thing of working with water soluble paints is you just need water also to remove any paint you would like to remove. So I'm just dapping in some paper towel and I can easily rub away some of that paint. Now I already see here it's way too far on that side. I mean, he's slightly chubby, but not that much. So it's about half a brush. Half a brush would be around here instead. Here, the same thing. Here we have our line. It's way too far. So just removing a bit. I think this will also be too high. Ah, that's okay. And later on, we'll load our brush with paint anyway, right? Right about here is the mount. One, two, three. In the middle, and two on the side. Not doing any detail in there yet. Again, it's just placement. And it has also eyebrows. Not one. This way until the edge of the line here, an imaginary line between the dots. Then it continues along that line. Now I'm just keeping these eye lines a bit vague. Later on, I will do a lot of tweaking there anyway. Now let's speed it up a bit for the remainder of this under sketch, because that's all what we're doing here. We're making an under layer. It's basically a blueprint, which is not too detailed, but it gives a general indication of all the placements. After this phase is done, then it's time to get out the paint for real and to layer it up on there. But this is what uh, I would like to conclude this video with. Should you like to see more about the actual painting process, please let me know in the comments below, then I can make a separate video on that. And for now, thanks for watching. If it was of any help, please leave a like. And if there's any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. For now, happy painting.